either. It's good to be here tonight. It's good to see each and every one of y'all. We're probably going to be doing more teaching tonight than we are preaching. We've done this study in my Sunday school class some five years ago. It was one of the most in-depth studies I've ever done in my life. And uh, God showed me a lot of things, and I know there's still a lot of things I need to learn about it. And I've got some of my notes from then, and some of them I've made now. And so if, uh, if y'all want to be turning to two or three different places, turn one to Daniel chapter 9. That's where our main text is going to be, where we're going to be teaching from, Daniel chapter 9. We're all go- also going to be looking there in, in Nehemiah chapter 2. You might want to mark that. Nehemiah 2, and then... Luke chapter 19, we're going to be turning to those. And we're going to be covering some uh, pretty in-depth stuff. If you got a pencil and paper, you're probably going to want to write some of these down. These are numbers, a lot of numbers here that we're going to go through. And I hope, you, I, hope I, I can, I prayed all day and all week since Brother Keith has told me this to come. I hope I can pray, I can, I can bring this out in a way that you can understand it. Because let, let me tell you something. This is today. We're, we're, we're right on the brink of it. And more people have been preaching this and teaching this and books are being wrote about it and sermons are being put out there about it than I've ever seen. And that's just not by chance. It's because the time is growing near, church, I'm telling you. We're, we're right here at it. You know, here, here in Matthew 24, where Brother Keith's been preaching, we're going to be in Daniel. But Matthew 24, where Brother Keith's been preaching, there it goes along with it there. The apostles, they asked three questions, if y'all remember. One was, when shall these things be? What shall be the signs of thy coming? And what shall be the signs of the end of the world? Well, Daniel addresses all three of these questions uh, in a very similar manner. 538 years before Christ ever came. He addresses very similar things. And, And Daniel is a book of prophecy. And that's a foretelling of future events. But it's also a book of eschatology. That's the foretelling of the end events. That's prophecy of the end times. So Matthew's got that in it, eschatology and prophecy. Daniel's got eschatology and prophecy. Revelations has got it. Ezekiel's got it. Second Thessalonians has got it. And there are some other places in the Bible. Prophecy of the end times, eschatology, okay? But Daniel is a book of this. And and in 607 B.C., Jerusalem, to kind of give you where we're at, Jerusalem and Judea was taken captive by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And they were were held captive for some 70 years. Uh, It's what it was prophesied to, that they would be held captive for 70 years by Jeremiah. And uh, Jerusalem, when when Nebuchadnezzar took them, he, he annihilated Jerusalem. I mean, he, he annihilated the walls. He annihilated the temple. He took the gold uh, bases and the things out of the temple. The whole city, everything in the city was laid low. It was annihilated. It was completely destroyed. And, and Daniel is one of the four Hebrew children mentioned that was taken captive. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego is the other three. And here in chapter 9, it's, it's near the end of the captivity when, when Daniel is speaking here. And, and as we're going to see in chapter 9. And, and Daniel is praying here in chapter 9 and making supplication for Israel and himself professing their sins and his sins and asking God to forgive them and to direct them. And, and while he's praying, God sends the angel Gabriel as an answer to his prayer. And Gabriel tells him these things we're fixing to speak about. So let's read here in Daniel chapter 9, starting at verse 21. It says, Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. <laughs> when he first started praying, And I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. That's how quick. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Now, here we go. Get your boots on. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint 
the Most Holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The streets shall be built again, the walls even in troublesome times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you so much for your, your presence, God, and your love and your mercy. Thank you, God, for the book of Daniel and the prophecies, God, of, of things that's going to take place in the end times, the eschatology. Thank you, God, that you give us that word, Father. God, help us to be prepared. We're, we're here. That's why we're here, God, to prepare people. Help us as a, as a church to reach out to folks and, and prepare them. But God, God, we're on the brink of you coming back. We know that, God. We know that. We can see as, as things are changing and times are changing. And God, the world is lining right up with it, Father. And God, I just pray that we're prepared for it. I pray that we're prepared for that day, Lord. And God, I just pray, Lord, for our pastor, Brother Keith. God, as he's away preaching. Lord, I just pray that you fill him with your spirit. And God, just give him the words to say. And God, just fill that place with your presence, God. And get honor and glory to yourself. God, I pray for, for Brother Clint in the back as he preaches to the youth, Lord. And as they have their services and others that are, that are back there, God, with the, the children. God, just bless them and be with them. But God, just be with us tonight. Father, take charge here. God, just speak through my mouth, I pray. Forgive me of my sins and where I fail you, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be covering this as quick as I can. I'll try not to keep you. I'm going to try to get you out of here in time. Uh, my class took four weeks to cover these five verses. Okay, so we're going to be hitting some highlights, all right? We're going to be hitting some highlights. Seventy weeks will be determined, verse 24, will be determined. Your Bibles might, be, might say decreed for the people. Not just 70 years. The 70 years is how long they're taking captive. That's already almost over with. Here it's about the 69th year that Daniel, and he's writing this right. But there will be a segment of time called 70 weeks. 70 weeks. Now the Hebrew is far better translated as 77s. Of course a week is seven days, right? So, but the Hebrew translated, and this was wrote, chapter 9 was wrote, Daniel was wrote in, in Greek, Chaldean, and Hebrew. This, this chapter was wrote in Hebrew. It was wrote in Hebrew. And the better translation for us to understand probably is 77s. Uh, they both mean the same, 70 weeks, 77s. But what does it mean? It's a segment of time, but how much? And we're going to discuss that. And we're going to look and see how much time it's going to be and, and what it's all about there. We're going, to, we're going to discuss it. To see the program here God is laying out in the remainder of the verses, we're going to see that. And uh, for God to accomplish the six things he, he, he will accomplish, as it's stated there in verse 24, we mentioned six different things. I wish we could go through every one of them, but that's another week or two there. But this 70 weeks, or 70 sevens, has, to, has references to years. Okay, it's references to years. It's not references to weeks. This is symbolism, okay? It's references to years. So 77s of years. So it's referring to 77s of years. Now bear with me because we're, we're going we're to break it all down here. So 70 weeks or 77s. So 70 times 7. That's what? 490. 490 what? 490 years. Mark that down. That's the 70 weeks. It consists of 490 years here. Now verse 24, there are 490 years are decreed or determined, it says here, for your people. 
and your holy city. Now notice that he talk, your people. He's talking to the Jews here. Determine for your people and your holy city. And it tells the six things that, will, that, that, that he will accomplish there in, in, in verse 24. He's going to tell that. Now let's, let's, let's look back up to verse 24 at the word determine. Look at that. It says, 70 weeks are determined or decreed. Uh, uh, some translated degree, decreed there. In Hebrew or Aramaic, decreed means to cut out. It means to cut out. So it's determined or decreed, it's cut out. So God had cut out a certain period of time. In the corridors of time, he's cut out a certain period of time, which is the 70 weeks or the 77s, the 490 years there that we've discussed. He's cut this out from, for future time, uh, there for a specific purpose, as we're going to see here as we go through this. The specific purpose is the six things that we read there in verse 24. So God has cut this 490 years out that He will accomplish before He brings in the everlasting kingdom. Okay? That's what we're looking for, right? The everlasting kingdom. Amen? Heaven on earth, all right? The everlasting kingdom. <coughs> Let's bear with me here. So here, here in uh, God, God's telling Daniel that before the everlasting kingdom can come, there will be a period of this of 49, 490 years cut, cut out in order for me to fulfill these certain things. This 490 years are, are, are for Israel, the city of Jerusalem. That's why he says, thy people... This one is not about us today, okay? The, the church today, right, right here, at this point, not this point. We, we will be, we, we're going to be confused if we try to put us into this point right here. Now, there's going to be a place where we're at, and we're going to bring that out where, we're, where we fit into this place. But this is about Jerusalem, and it's about God's people, Israel there, okay? Now, you and I will see where we... we fit in here in, in just a minute. But the 490 years are about Israel and their city and Jerusalem and God will accomplish these six things. Here's the six things. A time to finish transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity or atonement in other words. Those three things go together. Now the next three things, they go together. To bring in everlasting righteousness, this is verse 24. A kingdom of righteousness. To seal up the vision of prophecies. All prophecies being fulfilled. To anoint the most holy. In other words the Messiah. The Christ. Now he's, he's bringing us to the point where God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In those 490 years. Okay. Verse 25. Look what it says. Now therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem. And to the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. A score is what? Twenty. So three score is sixty. So three score and two, so that's sixty-two. So seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the walls even in troubles of times. We're told in verse 25 that there will be this segment of time. Seven weeks, seventy sevens. Seven times seven, which is what? Forty-nine. And we're going to be 62 weeks, 62 sevens. 62 times seven is what? 434. I've done the math already. I didn't just do that in my head. I don't want y'all thinking I did. <laughs> 434. So you got, there's three segments of time here. Seven weeks that you see there in verse 25. Seven times seven, that's 49 years. Then you got 62 weeks, okay, times 7, that's 434 years. In verse 27, he'll drop down there, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. So one seven. So you got 49 years, 434 years, and 7 years. That's 490 years, and it's 70 weeks. That's the full time, the 70 weeks. Each God cut out of time to accomplish those six things. Remember that. It's cut out of time. Now, it's not going to be run consecutive. Know that. There's part of it that's going to be separate from the other. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Seven sevens are 49. Sixty-two sevens are 434. And these will be consecutive right here. The first seven weeks and then the, the 60 and two weeks. The 62 weeks. 
They're going to be run consecutive. And we're going to show you that here in just a second as these, these uh, uh, add up here. Now, everything we see prophesied in the book of Daniel here is, is according to the Jewish calendar. That's important to know. It's based on a lunar year, their calendar was, and it was 360 days a year, usually. That's how it was, 360 days. Our calendar's 365 days in a year, okay? So it's different. So in adding this up, we have to use the 360-day calendar, and we're going to see exactly what's going to happen in these time segments given here in the 483 years. That's the 62 weeks and the 7 weeks, Okay? In other words, the 49 years and the 434 years, that's 483. That's the first two segments of time right there in, in verse 25. Are, are, do, are we following that? Everybody got that? Because I want to make sure because that's so important to, to see this. Don't get, don't get them mixed up. It's right there in verse 25. The, the seven weeks and the three score and two weeks right here. They're going to be run consecutive uh, right here. So the time starts in verse 25. From the going forth of the command to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. Or it may say in your translation, from the issuing of the decree to go forth and rebuild Jerusalem. I don't know what translation you have. Unto the Messiah, the Prince. That's the 483 years. That's the seven weeks and the 62 weeks, okay? Does everybody understand that? That's what's going to take place during that, this is our segment of time that God starts the stopwatch to, to get it rolling. He starts it right there at the going forth of the command, okay? So the 483 years begins the moment what happens? The command is given to rebuild the temple. Remember, the temple's been destroyed when they was taken by Nebuchadnezzar. It was annihilated. So there's a command that's going forth to rebuild this temple. Now turn with me to Nehemiah. Turn with me to the book of Nehemiah. That's right before Job. Okay? The book of Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah goes right along with the book of Daniel. So does Ezra because it's all right in that time. Jeremiah, Isaiah was a little bit before it. All those prophets were existing right around within that hundred year area of when they was taken captive. It's very interesting when you really get in a deep study on what is God, God is telling us. Now, turn with me there to Nehemiah because he's going to tell us what started the clock ticking right here. When Nehemiah received this permission here, we're going to see it. So let's, let's look at, at, at chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan. Okay, that was, the, that was the Jewish calendar. Nisan, that's kind of the March, April of our calendar, right around there. Actually, it, it, it falls, the date that we're going to have falls in April, or end of, the end of March. In the 20th year of our Texas, the king, so we, we've got a month, and we've got a, got a time, we've got a year, the 20th year. They kept good books back then when it pre re referred to kings and things, the years of their reign. History still has all that. Well, you can look it up today. You can actually look all that up. The 20th year, that'll give you the year there, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, uh, the, of the ki king or Texas, says that wine was before him, and I, that's Nehemiah, he was the cupbearer to the king, took up the wine and gave it <clears throat> unto the king. Now I had not been before sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing that thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. You see, why was he sad? Because, see, Nehemiah was, was born during the captivity. After they had taken captive, Nehemiah was born. But he knew his heritage. He knew about Jerusalem. He knew about his God. He knew about his people. And he knew his city weighed in lace, weight, laid in waste. It was annihilated. He knew that. And it made him sad. And God laid it upon his heart to do something about it. He laid it upon his heart, Nehemiah's heart, to do something about it. And he said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchre, lieth waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said to me, for what does thou makest request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. He must have prayed to a quick prayer right there as he's standing before this king. See, this king could have killed him right there just for having a sad countenance. Could have killed him. 
So God was working on the king too here. You got to know that. God was working on king, the king here. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judea, and to the city of thy father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, The queen also sitting by him, For how long will thy journey be, and when will thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I sent him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king. Now y'all watch here. You whoo, you look at this close. <laughs> Moreover I said unto the king, if it please the king, let the letters be given me. <laughs> let the letters be given me to the governor beyond the river that they may convey me over until I come into Judea and letters unto Asherah, the keeper of the king's force, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace which appertain to the house and for the walls of the city and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. This is the sending forth of the decree to go and rebuild Jerusalem. Right there it is. And we've got the date. Okay? We have got that date right there. We, we, we give in the month Nisan. The history has the, the year right there. And, and if you look in history, it's March 4th, 444 B.C. is when that took place. Mark that down. All right, now remember, there were two segments at a time that, that will be consecutive. The seven weeks and the 62 weeks. So 434 years there is going to be run consecutive, okay? It took, it, took, it, took Jer- it took Nehemiah 52 days to build the walls, okay, and the streets. But it took 49 years to rebuild that city. Now the temple had already been built. That was built under Ezra. The temple had already been built and the Holy of Holies and all that. And Nehemiah come and built a wall around it. But it took many years to build back that city that they had annihilated on the inside. Houses and all kinds of things was there. So 49 years passed doing that. The next segment which will be consecutive and following it immediately is the 62 sevens. Which is 434 years. Is everyone following that? 49 years to rebuild everything. Then here comes the 62 weeks. The 62 sevens. 434 years. The next segment of 62 weeks or 434 years will lead us up to what? The middle of verse 25 back in in Daniel. Look at the middle of verse 25. From the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until what? The Messiah, the Prince. Who's the Messiah? Jesus. Jesus Christ, that's the Messiah, all right? So the middle of the verse right there, it tells us, and to the Messiah, the Prince, or the, the anointed one, as Hebrews has it. In, in the Hebrew language, it was the anointed one. So from the issuing of the decree to rebuild the temple all the way to the presenting of the Messiah or anointed one will be 483 years total. And the time started ticking when our text says there, Give him the decree to go and rebuild it. That started the time. 483 years. That's the seven sevens and the 62 sevens right there. 69 weeks all together. Okay? 62 and 7 is 69, right? That's 69 weeks. 69 weeks all together. Now if we take, we take that 483 years... This period there, and we multiply it by the Jewish calendar of 360 days in a Jewish year, Jewish calendar year, in a Jewish calendar, we we get 173,880 days. Okay, that's how many days that 483 years is on the Jewish calendar. So, (laughs) this is so good. You can't make this up. You cannot make this up, I'm telling you. So 173,880 days from the time the king gave Nehemiah the decree to go rebuild the temple, something huge, something huge has to happen. Turn with me to Luke chapter 19. Something huge has to happen here, okay? Oh, this is, this is, this is going to get exciting right here, okay? 173,880 days later would lead us uh, up to March 30th, A.D. 33, 
March 30th, A.D. 33, the exact day the event I'm about to read to you happens. Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. This is Jesus. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage in Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples ahead of him, saying, Go into the village over against you, and in which you enter, you shall find a colt tied, uh, uh, a donkey there, a young a young donkey wherefore yet never man set loose him and bring him hither you know back in history you know you know when kings come back from war or from when kings come into the country in peace they come they come riding on a donkey that was customary that was customary that that took place back then. Here's Jesus. He's got a colt, a fold of a colt that has never been rode on. And here he comes. He's, he's got him, loosed him, and he bring him thither. And in verse 31, If any man ask you what you're loosening for, thus saith, uh, the, uh, because the Lord hath need of him. <clears throat> Verse 32, And as they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them, and as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose you the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the mountain of olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, look at this verse right here, saying, Blessed be the King. Lotus, that's capital K. Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees said from him, from the multitude unto him, Master, rebuke these disciples and he answered and said I tell you that if these should hold their peace the stones would cry out in worship to him why because he come in as the triumph of king he come in entering Jerusalem as the Messiah the Christ to that very day that's the very, that was Palm Sunday from the going forth of the decree to rebuild the city 483 years to the very date was Palm Sunday. You can't make that up. You, just, you can't make that up. God, you know, that gives a whole new meaning that, that, that God is sovereign, He is in control, and we can trust Him. Amen. I mean, right to the day, God's always on time. He's always on time. I mean, right to it. 500 and something years before Christ ever come on the scene, it was prophesied to the day what was going to take place. To the coming of the Messiah. Uh, <clears throat> to the Messiah come, it says right there in, in Daniel. Look what it says there back in verse 25. I love that. From the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem and to the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Is that not amazing? That's amazing right there. I'm telling you, that is absolute right on the, on the money prophecy of God right there. We've only talked about 69 weeks though. 69 weeks there so far. And he's saying after the 62 and 434 years and the, and the 7, the 49 years, the, 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 the 69 weeks there, it's March 30th, A.D. 33, there, there is a break of time. So that's, 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 that's March 30th. April 3rd, he was crucified. You can look it up. April 3rd, that was Friday. That's good Friday. On the 5th, he arose from the grave, okay? But here, after this date, what does it say there in verse 25? And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. After that 69 weeks, after that 69 weeks so far, and that's what we were talking about. There's one more week still after it. He says after this 69th week here, there's something that takes place. So something divides or something happens in between the 69 weeks and the 70 weeks. They don't run consecutive. The 69 weeks, one, one right after another. That 70th week is on out here further. 
It don't run consecutive. It's cut out of time, but it don't run consecutive here. Okay? So something happens between these two sections of time. There's a gap there. What happens in this gap? Verse 26, the anointed one will be cut off. There it says, as we just read. Cut off in the Hebrew means executed. It's talking about the cross. It's talking about that Friday. This is after the 69 weeks. It's talking about the crucifixion. He'll be cut off 500 and something years before it prophesies it to the day. To the day. He's going to be cut off. It clearly points to that crucifixion of Jesus upon the cross. So what happens in this segment of time, this gap? For one, Jesus dies. He arose from the grave of that Sunday, resurrection day. There at Jerusalem. Jerusalem gets destroyed in 70 AD. Look at verse 26. And after three score, after, notice it says, after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people, listen to this. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The people of the prince that is to come. Titus, Roman official, come in and wiped Jerusalem out in 70 A.D. Wiped it out. Okay, that's one thing that takes place there. But I want you to notice there's a twofold meaning there. And the people of the prince that shall come. The people of the prince. That's the Romans. Well, there's another prince that's coming. In the end times. And it's got to do with Rome still. You see, in, in Daniel, there's another study about a statue. And it tells about the segment of times. And in the legs are the iron legs. That's the Romans. And in the feet, iron mixed with clay with ten toes. There's ten hills on Rome. There's ten nations there. I'm telling you, it's fixing to happen. It's, fi it's fixing to come together. I'm telling you, it's fixing to happen. But that, just wait a minute here. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. So what happens in that 70? 70 AD happens in, in the interval between the 69th week and the 70th week. And then what? Then what, what else happens there before this 70th week comes? We're in it right now. The church age. The church age happens. In this span, we're in it right now. We're in that church age. The 69 weeks has been fulfilled. The 70th is still out there. It's eschatology. It's the end times. And we're, we're in the church age. So what took place? God, God was on the phone with Israel, okay? All the time. From, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was there with them. Okay, he's talking to them. He's, he's referring to them. He's, he's correcting them. He's telling them that they need to do this right. He's warning them that they're going to be taken captive if they don't change their ways. And, and they don't listen. They take them captive. He's still on the phone with them. He sends his son to come and die upon the cross with him. And they reject him. And he hits that button. He puts them on hold. And he picks up the other line to the church. And he's been on that line to the church. Now he hadn't forgot about Israel. They're still over here on a red blinking button. They're on hold. He hadn't forgot about Israel. Let me tell you something. That's, he's going he's to hang up on the church one day. And that's going to happen when the last trump sounds. That's when the church is called out. He has no more need to talk to him then. Because we're, we're going to be with him. Amen. At the last trump. Certain things the Bible has talked about that's, that's going to happen. You know, as, as time gets, gets, gets closer to winter, you know, we can tell it, can't we? You know, the leaves start changing. My wife can't stand it. She hates winter. I don't tell you anymore. But the leaves start changing and things, you know, the nights start getting cooler. So I go and I dig in my little Tupperware thing and I start getting out my coveralls and my warm socks and my little toboggan and stuff and my, my hunting stuff and things. Things to keep me warm. Why? Because I know a cold day like Thursday night of last week is going to happen. I know it's coming. I know it's coming because I can tell the season. Jesus tells the Jews, can, can you, you discern this and you discern, but can you not tell the seasons that, of time that you're in? Yeah, we can. Certain things ha had happened. 
You know, in the latter days, perilous times shall come. People will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And so on there in, in, in 2 Timothy. Oh, nothing, everything has happened. Everything has happened. I'm telling you, church, we're on the cuff. We are right on the cuff. Jesus is fixing to come back. It's fixing to happen. Y'all read about some of y'all that's been studying this far. The red heifers. Y'all been reading some about that, haven't you? They're looking for a red heifer, the Jewish people. Why? Because they're going to start sacrificing again. They're going to start sacrificing. And they have to have a red heifer. It's got to be perfect without spot and blemish. And they've got several over there. And they've got to watch it from the time it's born to the time it gets to a certain age. You can't have a spot on it. And when they find that one, they're going to start sacrificing. They're going to build an altar. And they're going to start sacrificing on it. That's right. We're, we're right there. They found these. And they're looking at them right now. And whether these are them or not, I don't know. But they, when they start sacrificing, that's when we come here to verse 27. This is the 50th, the 70th week. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. What's one week? Seven years. And in the midst of the week, he shall cease the sacrifice and the oblations to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even into the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. There is going to stand, come a man. And in Daniel, he's called the little horn. In Revelations, it's called the little horn. In Revelations, it's called the beast. It's the Antichrist. He's going to come and he's going to make peace with these nations over here that hate Israel. Okay? That's the Arab nations. That's from Hagar, the son of Hagar. That's where they come from. Ishmael. Okay, they've always fought. They've always hated each other. They, all, they want to annihilate Israel. Well, this, this Antichrist is going to come on the scene. And he, man, he is going to be a man of charisma. He is going to be a man that just people flock to him and look to him and they just think he is the bomb now. They just think he is it. And he's going to make a treaty with all these people that hate Israel and he's going to make it with Israel and them and there's going to be peace for seven years and they sign that treaty and everything's going to be good and it looks great. They can come down there in the Gaza Strip and everything's fine. Peace. They're going to be doing their sacrifices. And three and a half years in, he's going to crawfish on that. He's going to back out of that. And he's going to step into that place that they're worshiping. And he's, going to, he's, going to, he's going to sacrifice things that are not godly. That's the abomination that makes death, desolation. And he is fixing to wreak havoc on Israel. That's what he's going to do. And then the wrath of God is fixing to be poured out. And you can read this in Revelations, the vials and all that that come. Church, we're on the brink of it. All Jesus does is got to come out and say, come on home. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which remain are going to be caught up in the air and so shall we be forever with the Lord. Amen. My question to you is, are you ready? Are you ready? Because it's here. We are on the cuff of it. It's fixing to happen, I'm telling you. i got a feeling it's going to happen in our lifetimes. Everyone that's just sitting here, I believe it's going to happen in our lifetimes. I don't know that. Nobody knows the day or the time. But we know the season, don't we? We know that season. I've never seen the things like I've ever seen in my life that's coming on the scene. And I've never seen the preaching like I've ever seen of the last times and the end days and the coming of Christ. How about you tonight? Brother Bobby, as you come... I know that's a lot to take in. I hope you've understood that. The 70 weeks there and how that 70, it's just cut out in time. God cut the, the 69 weeks out first and then he's cut this other week out. It's over here at the very end. We're not going to see that week as a Christian except looking down. <laughs> We're going to be with Jesus. And when he comes down and sets his foot on the Mount of Olives, his people's going to be with him. We're going to be with him. We're going to be there. I'm going to see that. Are you going to see it? Are you ready for that day? I'm telling you, it's here. 
If you can't do it now, when everything is going good, everything's fine, we can worship in freedom, what do you think it's going to be like when the church is pulled out of here? It's going to be literal hell on earth, I'm telling you. It's going to be tough. Where are you tonight? Let's pray. Father God, we love you. Thank you so much, God, for your love.